I think the next stage for leadership now that we have built this significant, impressive, but some may say uh, comparatively ineffective in terms of impressing decision makers, network of people who have been responsible for security and nuclear weapons, is to try to engage with the next but one generation of leaders. I think the answer is now not to build networks of people who used to be leaders, but to try to build networks of people who will be leaders so that they can engage from a 21st century perspective with these challenges. I don't know very many people under the age of 40, for example, I pick that as an arbitrary age, but any comparatively young people in this, in this world who espouse an argument for nuclear deterrence with the same vigour as some of our political leaders still want to do. Yeah, well, I mean, I was at a very high level discussion among experts on security about nuclear weapons. And one of them, a Japanese man, came forward to my colleague after, uh, after it and said, look, I didn't understand a lot of this talk that was clearly rooted in Cold War vocabulary and discussion. And my colleague said to him, what age were you in 1990? And he said, 15. Uh, now, the, you know, there are a significant number of people now of, of a reasonably advanced and mature age who have had no experience of that kind of binary decision making which many of us grew up in. You know, you were on one side or other of this divide. You know, whether you liked it or not, geographically that's where you were. It was a very obvious division. And the decisions were all binary, you know, they were, they were black or white. There wasn't the complications of the grey areas that multilateralism in a multipolar world generates. My, my point is not that there are no political leaders under the age of 40 um, who, who fight for multilateralism or understand multilateralism. My point more generally is that there are very few people in the world under the age of 40 who understand what these weapons do any longer, who understand their purpose. Uh, some of them think that at the end of the Cold War, the problem was resolved and it has gone away and are not conscious of exactly what's been happening. Others, because of the world they live in, that is a world that doesn't have these black and white binary kind of decision-making processes in it, don't understand why something that functions through deterrence of this nature is of any relevance to the security threats that we face at the moment. And I, I mean, that's a big part of the argument too, is that we are increasingly identifying threats, real threats, things that are happening every day to undermine the structures of the way in which we live, uh, particularly in the cyber field, which are happening that we have no way of countering without massive investment. Um, and the, the potential investment and maintenance of these weapon systems now has an opportunity cost of us not being able to do the alternative. Of course people argue that if you don't spend money on nuclear weapons there's no guarantee that treasuries will allow it to be spent on conventional weapons. But the fact of the matter is if you spend it on nuclear weapons it can't be spent otherwise. So it can't be spent on other social programs, it can't be spent on other uh, conventional systems and it can't be spent in developing our ability to be able to see off cyber attacks or deal with other forms of threat to the way in which we live. Um, and in this country it's perfectly clear that from now on the money for nuclear weapons will come out of the core defence budget. It used to come out of a separate budget called the reserve substantially for the building of the systems, although we ran them out of the core defence budget, but it's all going to come out of the core defence budget now. So there will be a very straightforward uh, cost to be paid for spending money on nuclear weapons that this money will not be able to be spent on other forms of security. And I, I honestly believe that that's an argument that we've yet to engage in. I don't think people realise that. I think there's a whole swathe of the complexity of this world that people don't realise and don't understand. Um, and we need to engage with leaders of the future to ensure that they know they will have to make decisions in that area. And if they come into it without any knowledge or without any ambition, then they will be captured by the orthodoxies of it and they will be forced into making decisions that everybody's been happy with in the past because they will not have the time to get up to speed 
to be able to make the decision.